I'm David Mason, the Director of Public Health, and we're doing PSA number six, second wave. As usual, we have Chief Burke with us here, and he will give us an update on our case status in the town of Sandwich. Thank you, Dave. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, numbers are at 49 active cases currently in town here, uh, north of 220 recoveries, and still the three deaths uh, from the spring. Updating on uh, hospital numbers, uh, the combined facilities on the Cape, Cape Cod and Falmouth, uh, 32. Uh, hospitalized six in ICU, and those that are interested just up north at BI Plymouth, it was 27, I believe, and six, 27 in the hospital, six in ICU uh, with COVID-related symptoms. Perfect. So we do have some updates, and we'll speak to a few things here uh, today, one of them being um, people are seeing the information about vaccine, status of vaccine, uh, nurses receiving the shots down at Cape Cod Hospital, and we have had some communication and planning also. Do you want to uh, talk about that, Chief? Yep. So uh, Joanne Geek did a great job with Bud. They secured the contract with the CDC for vaccine distribution. So we are we're good to go there. I, we had some preliminary discussions to kind of plan out what this is going to look like. Um, for the people to understand, we've been planning for a dozen years for distribution. So this area I'm very comfortable in when we talk about vaccine distribution. So. Uh, we have some preliminary stuff that we are setting up. Uh, one of the things uh, early in the springtime, we were looking at extra personnel to help out, and the uh, library staff took it upon themselves to cross train as contact tracers, uh, which they completed this summer, which was uh, very helpful for us. Uh, we will probably peel off a few to help us with, um, with vaccine distribution, phone calling, et cetera. And again, we're working out the details to that, but. We're going to have something in play in the next 14 days that will carry us through probably for the next six months we talk about vaccines. Okay, because at this point we're familiar with uh, Joanne's office, Joanne Gake's office at the Public Health Nurse is receiving calls from people uh, inquiring about the vaccine. Uh, please, we're, we're at this point, please do not call her. She does not, she's not taking appointments. Uh, she's not taking names. So Please hold off on making any calls to her. We will be providing a direct line in the near future uh, for information and eventually taking, uh, uh, taking names in order to schedule appointments. But at this time, we're not doing that. Please hold off on making any calls uh, to Joanne at, at this point. And, and at the same time, uh, Chief, you've spoken of the uh, increase in the calls that you're seeing also and the types of calls and could we give the give the folks a quick heads up in terms of what's occurring and and what what they should do if they're seeing symptoms yep so if, if you remember in the springtime we talked about cardiac arrest we saw a significant increase for about an eight to ten week period um, what we're seeing now is stroke like symptoms and and uh, we've had a couple in the last two weeks and we're not sure if that's you know, related to the blood clotting supposedly of, of COVID, but we're seeing an uptick, not only in that and the falls is the other thing I should mention. And what they're seeing in the ER is falls and confusion um, are something that is being tied to more prevalent COVID positive cases. So this uh, this virus transitions as, as it goes through and we see different, different things. What we're seeing now is again, the stroke-like symptoms. And what we recommend is if you have underlying history, comorbidity of, of CVA or cardiac uh, related issues, uh, and you are COVID positive, just be aware anywhere from day four to day eight, sometimes you see the hyperinflammatory response. Um, if you have any type of symptoms at all, unusual symptoms uh, that make you nervous, please don't hesitate to call us. Uh, we have seen an uptick in cases, some COVID related, some not. But it's better to be safe than sorry and uh, and reach out to us via 911 uh, so we can get you evaluated at a medical facility. In one of our earlier PSAs, we had uh, a member of the Board of Health here, uh, Dr. Schneider, is ha talked to about why you should go to the hospital. You know, do you want to reiterate that? Because uh, they're more prepared now to take in people with problems. If, and I know that maybe the concerns again about going to the hospital are developing again. But uh, your guys go in there all the time. What are you seeing? Yeah, so in terms of COVID precautions, and it was March and April was a learning curve, I think, for everybody. Uh, but the amount of PPE and training and protocols in place now at all the hospitals, like I said, our members are going in and out eight, ten times a shift. And we have not had a direct transmission or COVID case 
job related with our personnel. And, and that's a testament to their professionalism, but also the PPE and the standards that are put in place at the hospital. So, so people should not be avoiding the not hospital. Not be afraid of the ambulance or the hospital. All right, because we don't want to get into that situation that people are waiting too long again. Oh, knock on wood, we haven't seen that yet, which is good, but I think it's important that we emphasize, you know, when we see trends and symptoms, I think it's important that we put that out there and and again, what we're seeing now is is stroke-like and CVA-type symptoms, um, you know, seem to be uh, what we're seeing right now. So if you have any type of, again, any type of concern, um, COVID positive or not, don't be afraid to call us. Uh, like I said, all the protocols, policies are in place. It just reminded me, as far as you mentioned, two people passing out, as far as that they're seeing that as a symptom now, just people blacking out. Uh, it was just a recent college basketball game, and I can't think of the team right now, but there was a player going down the, the court and just dropped. University and, of Florida. Yes, just turned out he was positive. You know, so that's quite stunning. The uh, Right now we're seeing a lot of cases still within households that it's transferring within households, but we are experiencing uh, that in, in businesses we're starting to see a lot of transfer uh, of, of the virus and uh, in based on the cases that we're receiving. And at the same time with that, we're receiving an increase in the number of calls of uh, complaints of people not following the COVID protocols. We are starting to visit more businesses, uh, received additional uh, notifications from the state regarding complaints about businesses. And but so we're seeing more cases associated with that. Again, you know, if, if you're seeing something that doesn't look right relative to protocols, by all means, call. Uh, do, you don't need to interact with them or create a problem. I'm aware of an individual that confronted a woman in a stop and shop and was thus arrested because it got a little too, a little too violent. So we don't want to go in that direction. Just bring it to our attention and we'll, we will address that. And uh, the staff will go out and uh, bring some educational material and bring them back into compliance. So is there anything else that we have? I just want to mention uh, one of the things we always look at in emergency management is incident within an incident. So we've been dealing with COVID for nine months and we have the impending storm coming uh, this evening into tomorrow. So uh, usually in the, in the virtual EOC team at this morning, uh, if there's a need for sheltering, we are not utilizing the schools and we're working with the Red Cross on uh, hotel motel placement. Uh, and again, looking at what we're seeing for the storm, um, it's not going to be a blockbuster, but there'll be significant snow, probably four to eight inches. There's a potential for power outages, so make sure that you are prepared for that. If there's a need for sheltering, you call 911 and we will coordinate with emergency management, the county and the Red Cross uh, to get sheltering. But that's the difficult thing. Well, normally we can cohabitate everybody together in a shelter. When you have COVID on top of that, we have to be very careful with uh, with what we do for sheltering. So we are on that. We're monitoring it, and, uh, and hopefully the storm, which seems to be a fast mover, will blow through, and uh, and then we can uh, continue on. As we had talked about having the deputy uh, emergency management director uh, Chip Riley uh, come to a, uh, a PSA to talk about how to plan for the winter. Uh, so, but we will be having him at a future PSA to talk about how to prepare because we will not be sheltering. Yeah. So, is there anything else? Uh, no, I think, uh, and again, wear your mask. We are, I always say this, we're, we're probably four to six months out from, uh, from some normalcy coming back. And uh, every day is another day closer to that. So, you know, we can sacrifice now for the greater good. You know, six months from now, we do our final PSA. Um, you know, we'll be back to some semblance of normalcy. All right. So mask up and be considerate of others, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.